Okay. We're going to try this again. I think this is better for you guys. Sorry, Androids don't like to be on their sides when they're doing lives. Uh, so, hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to South Mountain YMCA Camp's second li uh, third live class. Uh, my name is Becky. I'm the Outdoor Center Director, and we're going to meet some snakes today. We're going to talk about snakes. We're going to learn a little bit more about snakes. Um, it's going to be great. Uh, I'm going to wait for a few more people to get on here before I pull out our friends. Um, we have four educational snakes on site, which is really, really cool. Um, they're all, they range in all different sizes. They're from all different genuses. So it's really cool to have them here. Um, this is going to be a great class for those who maybe are a little bit uncomfortable with snakes. <laughs> maybe snakes aren't your favorite animal, which is okay. When I was uh, growing up, snakes were definitely not my favorite animal. But when I started working here, I was, a uh, given the opportunity to <laughs> take care of the snakes. And it was awesome because once I started to learn more about them, I started to really appreciate how cool and beautiful they really are. So hopefully, I'm not saying you're gonna be a snake enthusiast after this class, but I hope at least you'll feel a little, you know, more comfortable with them. You won't be as scared if you see one in the wild, you'll be like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I can go look that snake up later and see what type of snake it is. That type of thing. Uh, oh, hey. Hi, Katie. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get started here. So before I pull out and show you our, our first snake, I want to mention before you hold any snakes or reptiles, it's really important, especially nowadays when we're all washing our hands really well and putting a lot of hand sanitizer on our hands and maybe putting a lot of lotion on our hands it's really important to rinse off your hands before you handle these reptiles. And that's because the chemicals in those hard soaps, hand sanitizers, and lotions aren't really good to hold the snakes with. It can hurt them, it can make them kind of sick. So, uh, before I got on, I rinsed off my hands with nice warm water, dried them off, and got ready. Now, the question that I always get is, do snakes bite? What I get from all of our campers, from all of our school groups that come in, is do snakes bite? And I have to laugh a little bit because the answer is, of course, well, snakes have mouths, so like all animals, including us, yes, they, they can bite. The better question is, will the snakes bite us? And the short of it is, no. Snakes don't want to bite us. They, they, uh, that's like their last defense really they are much more about running away and hiding if they're scared or stressed um some snakes give off like a smell to like you know ward off predators they don't want to bite because when snakes bite they're really vulnerable especially if they try to bite something that's obviously really really a lot bigger than them they're not going to do that because then they'll put themselves in even more danger so as long as we follow some simple rules don't wave your hand in front of their face. <laughs> when you're holding on to them, hold on to like the middle of them, nice and not really tight, just, you know, nice and gentle. And then let them, you know, wrap around your fingers, let them crawl through your, or slither through your hands. And if you keep to those rules, you're not gonna get bitten by a snake. So uh, that's my whole spiel with that. We have, like I said, four snakes. So we're gonna start from the smallest and we're gonna work our way up to our biggest snake uh, here on the mound. So our first snake, drum roll please, is Jeffrey. This is Jeffrey. Say hi Jeffrey. Hi Jeffrey. Jeffrey is our baby on the mountain. He's only like, he's just a year old. He was born last March or April. So this is Jeffrey. Now Jeffrey is a California king snake. Okay. So you're not going to see this type of snake around here. Um, but that's okay because we actually do have a type of snake that is in the same genus as Jeffrey. Now, when I say genus, I mean they're related. They have a lot of um, the same characteristics. So, Jeff, can you kind of tell, like, if you're, I'm going to hold him up here. You can kind of see his patterning. Can you kind of guess what snake we have around here that looks like Jeffrey? I'll give you a hint. They have a couple more colors in them. Um, a red, maybe a, a white, a black, sometimes yellow. Um, 
It's a milk snake. If you were saying milk snake at your screen, you are correct. Yes, it is a milk snake. So milk snakes that we have around here are from the same genus. So they're, they have the same type of characteristics. Um, so, and they're all known as king snakes. A milk snake is a type of king snake. So, um, so now with Jeffrey, now you guys can see he's about, maybe you can see a little bit. It's hard to show you. He's about a foot and a half long. Now Jeffrey's going to get to be about three to four feet long when he's fully grown. Um, right now he's starting to warm up a little bit, so he's starting to move a little bit more. All snakes are ectothermic, meaning they are cold-blooded. Um, and what that means is they can't uh, regulate their own body heat, like they don't make their own body heat like we do. We're always 98.6, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, but snakes, on the other hand, they have to, it depends on their environment. That's why we don't see snakes a lot of time, um, barely ever in the winter. It's because they're slow moving. They're usually burrowed down. Um, they're doing a thing called brumating. It's a snake version of hibernating. So that's what they're doing during the winter. Now, as he starts to warm up in my hands, though, he's going to start to move around a lot more. And you see how I'm just letting him kind of wiggle through my fingers here and everything like that. Um, so... The cool thing about why king snakes are called king snakes, why all like why why milk snakes are called king snakes, there's a really certain characteristic why they're called king snakes, and that's because there's something called ophiophagic. Now that is a Greek word. I am probably butchering it a little bit, but basically what it means is they're snake eating. Yes, this little guy, if he was in the wild, he would grow up and eat his brethren, okay? So he would go, grow up and eat other snakes. Not just non-venomous snakes, like all of our snakes here are non-venomous, meaning that they don't have fangs, they don't bite and like inject venom. They don't just eat non-venomous snakes, they actually eat venomous snakes too. I'm talking about rattlesnakes, copperheads, cottonmouths. They eat that for breakfast. And you're all probably wondering, it's like, but what about the venom? They have a high tolerance for it, okay? so. It doesn't bother them as much. So it's super, super cool. And that's why they're called king snakes. Another snake that's uh, also a snake eating snake that you might have heard about is a king cobra. See the correlation there? King snake, king cobra. All of those snakes eat other snakes. Now, here in captivity, here at camp, uh, this little guy, he's never going to room with another snake, so he's just going to eat the usual things. Just mice. They usually just eat mice, but, you know, in the wild, they don't just eat snakes. They eat uh, mice, uh, frogs, uh, you know, small animals, rats, sometimes birds, that type of thing. But here at camp, he just lives on nausicles, just frozen mice. That's what he, he likes to eat. But, yeah, so that is Jeffrey. Really cool, right? Okay. Um, so we're going to move along here. We're going to go to our next snake. Everyone say goodbye to Jeffrey. If we have time at the end, I'll pull him back out. But yeah, there he is. There's his little face. I mean, he's cute, right? He is cute if you look at him and squint your eyes. Maybe just look at him like side glance. He's super cute. Okay, cool. We're going to put him away and we're just going to put him in this little container. Awesome. So our next snake. We have two of them, actually. We have two of this type of snake here, but it's really cool that we have two because they actually, though they're of the same exact type of snake, they do have a slightly different look to them, okay? So we're going to pull. Now, this next snake, it's not in the same genus as Jeffrey is. It's in a genus called Pantherophus or Pantherophus. Again, that's Latin. Didn't take Latin, so I'm not sure if that's entirely correct. Um, but let me pull them out here. Whoop. Oh, hello, lady. It's a lady. It's a lady. She's very, very pretty. So, Pantherophis, or the rat snake. So, this is actually a corn snake. That's the common name to, for it. But the other name is the... Oh, no. Sorry about that, that guy. She got away from me and she tried to knock over the camera. Um, so, she is the red rat snake. She's crawling all around here. We'll bring her back over here. There she is. So, red rat snake or corn snake. Her name is Mango. Now, some of you, if you've been to camp before, might recognize Mango. She's very, very cool. Um, she is, let me put her down right there. I'm going to set you guys up on something a little bit safer so that you don't. There you go. Awesome. Cool. Woohoo. So now, Mango here is... 
She's probably about five years old, five or seven. And you can't really see her in this whole frame because she is very, very long. Uh, she's about four feet long. Uh, corn snakes or red rat snakes can get to be about up to five feet. So she could still do a little bit more growing. Um, she's still she's still pretty active. As you can see, she's warmed up a little bit, so she's definitely very, very active. Now, they call her a rat snake. I'm guessing you guys can guess why. Um, and it is because she is uh, eats rats, she eats mice. Now, can you guess why they call her a corn snake? That's really the question. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Look at the bottom of her. See that? See that? It's one of the reasons why they call them corn snakes. It looks like corn, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like corn. So that's super, super cool. Um, the other reason is she is found, these guys are found around cornfields. Can you guys think why should she be find, found around cornfields? It's because what eats corn? Mice, right? Mice and rats. Yeah, I know the coloring. Yes, Rebecca. Yes, the coloring is really, really pretty. She's so pretty. Now, their full name is actually Pantherophus uh, gutatus. And gutatus, that second thing, actually means brilliant or bright. Um, and they were named because they have such a pretty, pretty color. Now, corn snakes are native to PA. We, you would see them all the time here in PA, but you would probably see them in around farms because again, that's where the mice are. Um, you would see them in fields. Um, she is just like going at you guys really, really fast here. She just wants to be your friends. Um, she, so they're found like, you know, you would see them now. They're not really in the forest. Okay. So they are more of a burrowing snake. Um, she is just like all about you guys. Um, they're more of a burrowing snake. Uh, so they don't like climb very much. So you'd, you'd find them in tall grasses, that type of thing. Now, these guys are known to be the most docile of snakes. She's very like, you know, she, she's not showing it right now, but they're very chill. They're very chill snakes. She's just staring at you guys the whole time. Um, there she, there she is with her little tongue. Um, so she's very, very cool. Now I mentioned that she's going to get bigger. Now what happens to snakes when they get bigger? is that they start to shed. Um, now, everyone sheds. I know this might be a shocking thing for you guys or it might be really gross to think about, but every single animal sheds. Hello, how are you? Um, every single animal sheds. Um, we are shedding as we speak, as you watch, you are shedding right now. Um, snakes don't shed like that. They don't shed all the time. They shed periodically. So as they get bigger, their skin loosens and it get, comes off in one giant piece. Wait a second, let me just, come here lady. She's gonna go around my neck for a second here, just to chill, and then we're gonna show. So, snake shed in one, here we'll do it this way. Ooh, one giant piece, okay? So snake shed all their whole skin sheds off of them. Um, and how we know a snake is about to shed is that they actually, they kind of lose that bright color. They get a little dull looking. The skin starts to get loose. And also their eyes get a little clouded. Okay. Now, obviously, um, Mango here isn't about to shed. Her eyes are very, very alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic, staring at you guys. She's a very pretty, bright, mango-y color. Um, but I am going to pull out our next snake plankton who is in the process of shedding now usually we don't touch snakes when they're shedding they're not comfortable and the real reason why we don't touch snakes while they're shedding is and i'm going to hold this up so this is a shed don't get too grossed out this right here is their eye okay and you can see there's a scale actually over top of their eye now snakes they don't have eyelids they don't blink okay they have this scale that protects it, but as they start to shed, that scale loosens, and that's why their eyes look cloudy. Now, when their eyes get cloudy, it's hard for them to see, so they get nervous. They, get, they can get a lot more scared because they can't see. One of their senses is gone. They don't know if a predator is coming or anything like that. So we usually, as a rule, you don't touch snakes when they're shedding. Plankton, he's been with us a long time, so when I pull him out, it's not going to be for very long. Um, but, you know, we're going to pull him out. We're going to take a look. And you guys are going to be able to see the big difference between a snake that's not shedding and a snake that is shedding. Okay? So, 
Let me pull it like, ugh. well, I'll keep it around my neck for now until I get uh, plankton out. So let's grab plankton. Here, buddy. Okay. So, whew, she is going into my sweatshirt. That is very cool. Okay, so here is Plankton. See his eyes? Don't be freaked out. He's fine, but his eyes are blue. They look like he has blue eyes. And that's just because he's shedding. You can see his color. It's a little duller than mango, mangoes. And that's because he is about to shed. And he's not too bad right now. He's not very nervous. He's, you know, he, he can sense that I'm not going to hurt him here. But you see that eye? Isn't that cool? So snakes, when they're all done shedding, they, what they do is when they're about to shed, they'll scrape themselves against a rock and or a log or something. And then they'll just kind of shimmy out of that skin. And they have, then they look bright, beautiful color. And they're a little bit bigger. So yeah, so you see, you can kind of see the difference. We're not going to get these guys too close to each other. They don't cohabitate. They just live next door. Um, so yeah, that's our two corn snakes. Very, very cool, right? Awesome. Okay, so feel free, guys, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask. Go ahead. Um, and if I don't get a chance to answer your questions during the live, I can always come back and answer them later. So feel free if you have any questions about snakes. Um, if I don't know them, I can definitely um, find out for you and that type of thing. So say goodbye to Plankton. He, we're not going to stress him out anymore, and we're going to put him away down there. So both corn snakes, I'm going to try to get... Mango out for my sweatshirt here. Okay, so both are corn snakes or red rat snakes eat rats. They're constrictors, right? So they, they hug things. They really squeeze them tight. They wrap around them, squeeze them until that creature passes out, and then they eat them whole in one big gulp, um, which is sometimes interesting to think about. Um, don't have to think about it too hard though. Um, they're known as ambush predators. So what that means is snakes aren't running after you. So if you see a snake and you're very not comfortable with it, just go away. It's not going to chase you. So that's not how snakes, uh, snakes come at you. They, they, they're not going to chase you down the mountain. Uh, <laughs> they are much more, they're going to wait for their prey to wander past them before they strike. Um, so a common, Hey Henry, hi. So most common snake you probably see on the mountain, I would say is a garter snake. And that's actually the most common snake that a lot of people find in their gardens, uh, in their backyards and everything. So it's garter snake. Some people call it a garden snake, dad. Um, so, but it is a garter snake. Um, but, uh, so, but those are the small snakes that have like yellow line, uh, vertical lines down them. Um, they're very cool snakes. They're, they look like they're smiling all the time. If you look up a Google image of them, it always looks like they're smiling and happy little snakes. Okay. So, so anyway, so they are constrictors. Um, so, and they're ambush predators. So they, unk, they bite their prey. They, they grab their prey. They wrap around their prey. They wait for their prey to fall asleep. And then they gulp, gulp down that prey. Um, a lot of, a lot of people ask, well, how can, how can they eat a whole mouse and not chew and not choke? So the acids in a snake's stomach are very, very strong, and they can break it down very quickly. Also, snakes are able to essentially hold their breath for up to 20 minutes. They have the capacity, the air capacity, to be able to continually swallow something that's really big um, for up to 20 minutes. So if it takes them a really long time to eat something like that, they're not going to, it's very unlikely that a snake is going to choke. So we're going to put our friend Mango here away, and we're going to bring out our last snake, um, and it's shadow. So those who, you know, are a little nervous about snakes, brace yourselves. He's, he's, he's a biggin. He is a biggin. Okay. Now shadow is also a, a pantherophis or a, a, a rat snake. So shadow is a black rat snake or an Eastern rat snake. Um, commonly we call them black rat snakes, but the technical term is, but the, like the, Real term is Eastern rat snake. Um, and these guys you would also see at camp, but probably not as much. Um, they like to hide in wood piles um, a lot, but you also wouldn't see them for another reason. Ah, he's underneath his little. So we have these hides that are in their boxes right now, and he was sleeping under it. So I had to move it and disturb him. Hey, buddy. 
Whew. Okay, so we'll do it this way. And here he comes and that's him. Okay, he doesn't even fit in the frame. He's a big guy. There he is. There he is. Everyone say hello to Shadow. Hi. <laughs> so Shadow is a black rat snake. He is, like I said before, he, you would find him in the forest. Okay. So these are forest snakes. They're really, really good climbers. Remember I said our corn snakes, not so big on climbing. They like to burrow. These guys are really, really good climbers. Um, they like to hang out in trees, wait around in trees, wait for an un, unsuspecting little bird maybe, and that's the, that's gonna be their lunch. And if you can kind of see it, he's wrapping around everything on my table. If you can kind of see their bellies, do you see how it has like a sheen to it? It's hard to show on camera, but it's actually iridescent. It kind of mirrors all the colors around it. It's, a, it's a, a little bit of a rainbowy color. You can't really see, but you can see that he's very, very shiny. And what that does is when he's climbing way up there in the trees, sorry, buddy, I know this is like weird. Um, when he's climbing way up there in the trees, the colors of the trees, the greens kind of reflect off of him and it helps him camouflage even more and make him look more just like a branch in there. You're fine. You're fine. He's warming up on me here, guys. He is. Um, so now Shadow is about six feet, a little over six feet long. Um, he doesn't shed as much as our other snakes. So he's about, he's moving everything. He's about fully grown. He's probably not going to get that much bigger. Um, best estimate, you know, he's probably about 10 to 15 years old. Snakes live in captivity maybe about 25 years, maybe a little bit more. It depends on how good they're being taken care of. You see him, he's like just wrapping completely around my arm, getting a big hug. And that's not because he's trying to constrict me. A lot of people are like, he's trying to squeeze me, he's trying to choke me. No, he's just like, don't drop me. Um, he's just asking not to be dropped. He's just treating me like a giant tree. So that's why he just doesn't like to be held like, you know, back. But again, remember, we're just gonna hold him, like kind of let him do what he's gonna do, keep our hands away from his head. So so he can just, you know, zoom around for us. There he is. Awesome. So he's going to get, you know, this is about the size he's going to be. He's going to be about a little over six feet long. Now, let's talk about, because he's bigger, so we can see it a little bit better. What is he doing into the camera? Ooh, buddy. There it is. There it is. Back him up a little bit. You see that? See that tongue? He's being very rude to you guys right now. Very, very rude. There it is. Awesome. So. What are snakes doing when they're just sticking out their tongues all the time? Um, a lot of people say they're smelling, and you're not wrong, but you're also not exactly accurate. Um, so snakes, unlike us, on our tongue, we have taste receptors, okay? So like if we lick something, we can tell if it's salty or if it's sweet or if it's bitter and that type of thing, okay? But... Snakes don't have any taste receptors on their tongue, and they also don't have any smell detectors like our nose. They don't have any smell detectors in their tongue. What snakes are doing when their tongue comes out is collecting chemical, chemical compound, all that stuff. They're collecting chemical information, and when their tongue goes back into their mouth, at the roof of their mouth is something called a Jacobson's organ. And sorry about that, guys. And that Jacobson's organ takes all the chemical information that they've collected and then sends electrical impulses to the brain. So if like the, he's like sniffing around right now and he smells or smells or ga gathers chemical information about a mouse being nearby, he's going to, that impulse is going to go to the brain and he's going to hunker down and wait for a mouse to wander past him and everything. So when snakes' tongues are out, they're not licking you. They're not tasting you to see if you'd be a good snack. No, they're just getting more information about, you know, their surroundings and seeing if they have to be scared or if they should get ready to hunt or that type of thing. Um, now, a lot of people ask, why does he have a forked tongue? My favorite theory about that was to clean out his nostrils. Um, that's not it, but it's really a fun theory, but, but it's actually just to give them a 3d picture of what's around. They can collect information, that chemical information from two different points so they can have a better sense of what's in front of them. Cause you see snakes eyes, you know, they're more on the side of their heads. 
Okay, so, and that tongue is basically letting them see what's in front of them. Okay, so very, very cool. There he is. Awesome. Okay, so we're about out of time here. Um, sorry about the, the falling over there in the beginning of it, but you know, it's okay. Camp happens, right? Um, so a couple more things to talk about. Now, when snakes are small, they're very vulnerable. So they get really scared. When these guys are born, they uh, are actually are brown and patterned, and it's for camouflage. Um, our friend Jeffrey, who's really small, he gets, you know, he gets really scared, so he kind of curls up in a ball a lot of times. This guy, he's not scared at all. But now is the time things are getting warmer. Snakes are coming out. They're being born right now. Some snakes are hatched from eggs. Some snakes are live birth, like garter snakes. Live birth, so like a whole bunch of them come out at once. Um, so go on outside. See if you can find some snakes. If you're comfortable with it, you can pick up a non, make sure you know it's non-venomous. We do have some venomous snakes in here in PA. But you know what? If you're comfortable and you have permission from a parent, Shadow, come on, man. <laughs> if you have permission from a parent, you know, go ahead, pick up a snake, uh, see how it is. But remember the rules. Make sure you don't have any harsh chemicals on your hands. Make sure you're not holding them by their head. You're just letting them move nice and easy through your hands. That's it. And then once you're done getting that photo for Instagram and everything like that, you can put them back. Okay, put them back where you found them. Now, if they're on the road, because a lot of snakes are basking, sunning themselves in the road or on a bike path, move them off the road. Use a stick to encourage them to get out of the way so they don't get run over. But any other thing, leave them in the wild. Don't take them home with you and release them in your backyard. That's just going to stress them out. Definitely don't take them home and let him be. He's going inside my sweatshirt. Um, definitely don't take them home with you and uh, make them your new pet. Wild born, uh, any animal doesn't do well in captivity like that. It will get really stressed out and it won't live its best life. So make sure you just leave the wild where you found it. But sure, visit a little bit. Hopefully you guys, you know, learned... A little bit from this at least you got to see some of our snakes here on the mountain and everything and just remember to you know keep your eyes out because they're running away from you before you even see them so make sure you just keep your eyes to the ground or for shadow's sake keep your eyes looking up at trees because they're hanging out there in trees as well so um that's all i have for today you guys are going to join us again on monday um 2 30 for our next live class i'm going to be doing another animal creature feature on Friday with our turtles. So definitely join us back for that. And just stay tuned to our Facebook to see what our next live class schedule is and everything, guys. So that's it from us here on the mountain. So see you guys. Have a good weekend. Stay healthy and keep those fires burning. Bye.